Hey guys, David here. Welcome to Digital Outlook, where you're going to find the best community in all of crypto. In today's video, we've got the Bank of International Settlements describing the demand for XRP and the Interledger Protocol. So guys, without further ado, why don't we get to it? Guys, I believe today's video is probably one of the most important videos that I have ever made. And if you really want to understand what's coming and how this new digital economy is actually going to look like, you're definitely going to want to watch this one all the way to the very end. It is that important. Now, having said that, if throughout the video you think it deserves it, then I would say smash the like button, guys, and so that we can get this information out to absolutely as many people as possible and that would be fantastic. Guys, some news has come out today that most folks are overlooking and aren't actually reading the undercurrents. It is a big, big deal. And this is coming out of the Bank of International Settlements. And it's the head guy, Augustin Carson, who's actually putting this out there. And it is a major, major deal because what he's describing, guys, is exactly what XRP and the XRP ledger was created for. Just take a look over here at this article right here now it's dated as of february the 22nd and it says here bank of international settlements head describes ideal unified ledger for central banks and other financial users speaking in singapore augustin karstens describes a ledger that would accommodate a variety of public and private projects in discrete but connectable parts now just listen to this description general manager of the bank for international settlements augustin carson spoke at the singapore fintech festival on february 22nd just yesterday and describe the digital financial infrastructure he believes would best suit central bankers' needs. He called that infrastructure a unified ledger. Carson's compared the theoretical unified ledger with a smartphone, saying they both work seamlessly with a variety of components. Unlike a smartphone, a unified ledger would have open architecture, however, would show programmability and composability. That is, it would run and bundle smart contracts. There are over 2 million apps available to smartphone users, Carson's noted. Carsten's noted. He said, a unified ledger is a digital infrastructure with the potential to combine the monetary system with other registries of real and financial claims. A unified ledger would not have to be decentralized or permissionless, Carson said, but could accommodate a variety of projects that use money as a means of payment and settlement, where the central bank plays a large role in governance of the ledger and consumer-facing settlement sector is in private hands. Guys, this is absolutely astounding. Now, I want to show you another article, just kind of nail it home a little bit more. BIS chief floats a unified programmable ledger to turbocharge turbocharge payments innovation. That's Augustine Carson's right there. A unified programmable ledger could unleash an explosion of innovation in payments and money comparable to the arrival of the smartphone, according to Bank for International Settlements General Manager Augustine Carson's. The BIS and central banks around the world are working on a host of innovations, including central bank digital currencies and tokenization of different assets, including tokenized deposits. But, Carson says in a speech at the Monetary Authority of Singapore, to fully realize the transformative potential of these new financial technologies, we need some way to bring them all together. And that's where he's coming up with this unified ledger. Now, guys, this is truly something because I want to show you the definition of what the interledger protocol is. And this is right off of Investopedia. Now, listen to this in and compare it to what we just heard Augustine Carson say is the absolute solution for central banks under a global CBDC system. 
What is Interledger Protocol? Interledger Protocol is a blockchain protocol used for payments across different payment networks. It actually should say distributed ledger technology. The open source protocol connects ledgers from two or more different banks, thereby removing intermediaries and central authorities from the system. It promises to reduce costs and time required to process cross-border transactions. Interledger is utilized by Ripple Labs to connect bank systems across borders where the XRP, and they're calling it Ripple here, but XRP is the actual token, functions as a standardized settlement layer between global banks. We're talking central banks, making Ripple somewhat akin to digital Hawala service. Guys, this is a massive deal. Now, if you don't know who the Bank of International Settlements is, Take a listen to what this description in Wikipedia says. The Bank of International Settlements is an international financial institution, and guess what, guys? Owned by central banks, right? Federal Reserve, Bank of England, Bank of Canada, all these major banks, Bank of India, on and on and on, all around the world, the European Central Bank, that fosters international monetary and financial cooperation and serves, by the way, guys, as a bank for central banks. The Bank of International Settlement carries out its work through its meetings programs and through the Basel process, hosting international groups pursuing global financial stability and facilitating their interaction. It also provides banking services, but only to central banks and other international organizations. It is based in Basel, Switzerland, with representative offices in Hong Kong and Mexico City. Guys, this is absolutely, as far as I'm concerned, what Augustin Carson has done, he has literally wrote laid out the roadmap for how Ripple is going to actually play a major function and a major role in this new financial system and connecting and interconnecting all of these central banks. Now, take a look at this article right here. And this was as of February 23rd, 2023, today. XRP sees ultra bullish prospects as developers reveal a cross change bridge to what drive interoperability is coming. Listen to this. Ripple X and XRP Ledger developers have unveiled a new XRPL standard for a cross-chain bridge that would considerably expand the potential use cases for the network and the XRP token. XRP Ledger could soon introduce a cross-chain bridge. Ripple's VP of Corporate Strategy and Operations, Amy U. Yoshikawa has shared her elation about the newly published XLS 38D, a standard proposal that would allow developers to create applications on the XRPL, ensuring network compatibility. Now, guys, let me ask you something. Do you think it's somewhat of a coincidence that Augustin Carson just yesterday at a major fintech and monetary forum in Singapore, come out and talk about a unified ledger. And here you're having this release of this news about this cross-chain bridge to drive interoperability. And then you take a look at what the interledger protocol is, and it absolutely matches what he described as a unified ledger. Guys, I don't think it's a coincidence at all. Now, I want to show you this video clip from Ripple themselves, and it is about the infrastructure of central bank digital currencies how that they're going to run in this new global financial system and the role that the XRP ledger and XRP is going to play. And I'll tell you what, guys, it is a major eye-opener. And while you're watching it, I want you to think about what you just heard from Augustin Carson, who is the head of the Bank of International Settlements, which, by the way, is the central bank of all central banks. And then we'll be right back. Today's global financial system is more complex than ever before. Yet as the world's economies grow, the infrastructure they rely on needs to evolve. Every nation has its own independent monetary policy and regulatory standards. But with varying system access and legacy technology, the world's financial infrastructure can seem overwhelming. 
At Ripple, we enable governments and central banks around the world to create new, high-performance financial infrastructures built on blockchain technology. More specifically, we help governments build and launch central bank digital currencies or CBDCs. They are national currencies powered by modern technology that is secure, centralized and scalable. And these CBDCs will enable central banks to implement their monetary policies in more efficient and effective ways. The Ripple team brings a wealth of expertise to every new CBDC solution, working with hundreds of financial institutions, policymakers and regulators. Our solutions facilitate billions of dollars in cross-border payments around the globe. Ripple's CBDC solution is based upon one of the most reliable, sustainable and open source blockchain protocols, the XRP Ledger XRPL. The XRP Ledger technology is perfect for CBDC blockchain applications. It's fast with transactions complete in 2 to 3 seconds. It's easily customizable and programmable. It's reliable having closed over 72 million ledgers since 2012. The ledger's native functionality for issuing digital currencies also reduces the need for bespoke programming and reduces risk. Finally, the technology is sustainable as one of the first carbon-neutral blockchains. Each pilot is completely customizable and shaped to the needs of the central bank by an expert team. Here's how it works. Each nation's CBDC is hosted on a private version of the XRP ledger. Access by participants is granted by the administrator and fully secure. Using Ripple's CBDC solution, the central bank has full control over supply, allowing them to increase supply or redeem it. And through a standard API and multiple SDKs, integration into existing systems is simplified and suitable for traditional and non-traditional participants. Additionally, the central bank can issue other assets and allow participants like commercial banks to do so. The central bank can also authorize who holds the currency on the ledger, whether that's held directly by consumers or through commercial banks. Transactions typically settle in seconds compared to days, making CBDCs suitable for use cases like retail points of sale. This can open the door for real-time salary payments and collection of tax at point of sale, which gets funds to an institution or a consumer faster while eliminating debt risks. CBDC data is fully controlled and auditable by a central bank, allowing for its analysis in support of monetary policy. And the data maintains transaction privacy while still allowing for regulators to monitor for criminal activities. Finally, a Ripple-designed CBDC can provide a means to bridge disparate currencies through XRP. Its inherent interoperability can allow for connection with other central bank ledgers for efficient cross-asset and cross-border transactions. This can be done with cross-issuance, using XRP as a bridge currency or via cross-ledger communication protocols. This reduces the risk that institutions are forced to accept when transacting across multiple networks or currencies in the current system. The creation of a CBDC provides powerful benefits for the economy and people of an adopting central bank. It's technology that places trust in digital money in the hands of a central bank that can guarantee accessibility to funds and the resulting services, as is the case with cash today. The result? An improved foundation for global financial development where businesses, commercial banks and ultimately people can unlock new economic potential. Work with Ripple to build a custom pilot designed for your country or institution today. So guys, after having reviewed that video, and then you compare that to Augustine Carson's description of what is needed, what's demanded is a unified ledger. And then you couple that with the definition of what the inter, inter ledger protocol is. It is practically a no brainer. You're literally seeing the roadmap laid right before you. Guys, think about this. All of these countries are out there developing their central bank digital currencies. And who has been behind the support of a lot of the infrastructure with respect to that development? Well, guys, we all know 
It has been Ripple. Ripple has been in the background helping to develop the infrastructure for this new global financial system. And you've got all these central banks that have been working with Ripple to do it. And now you got the central bank of all central banks, the Bank of International Settlements, literally coming out this week talking about the need for a unified ledger. And the very next day, you've got Ripple's representatives coming out there and talking about the application, a new application upgrade to the XRPL that is going to allow for cross-chain interoperability and dApps that can be built on it, smart contracts and the like. Guys, you can't make this stuff up. I don't need digital asset investors, 12-year-old or however old he is, to come and actually draw me a picture. Why? Because it's as plain as day, guys. We can see what's happening. And for those of us that have had the conviction to actually see it and then get involved like we have, I think our day of reward is coming up very, very soon. This is an amazing story. I'm actually shocked that it's not getting as much press as you think it would it would because he has literally laid it out before us and I'll tell you what guys I am absolutely stoked because you know that settlement is probably coming here in March we're going to see a major major implementation of this new system especially with the ISO 222 messaging standard coming into full play here in 2024 and 2025 and it is really going to be something to behold and we're getting to see it happen and unfolding in real time and I can't wait till we all end up in that winner circle together. So guys, we have graduated dozens of people through our coaching program and have received some amazing feedback in return. And what our coaching program is, that is where you and I can meet personally one-on-one -on -one for one hour over Zoom. And during that time, I share with you our personal journey in that last bull run and what enabled Judy and I to experience some amazing financial gains. I also go over the mistakes we made so that you don't have to fall into the same pitfalls that we did. We work together to develop your exit strategy and we take a look at your portfolio to make sure it's balanced towards your goals. We can even help you get your assets off an exchange and onto a hardware wallet along with delivering to you some amazing techniques that will really help you in this space. Now the cost of that is $250 and if that's something that interests you, you write me right there at coaching at the digital outlook.com and we'll get y'all booked in. So guys, I hope that you enjoyed today's video. Boy, I'll tell you what, there are a lot of changes coming to this world, that is for sure. Now, I want to invite you to join the conversation and drop your comments right down there in the comments section. Open it up to the rest of the community and start a discussion. Now, many of you know I'm not a financial advisor and this isn't financial advice, but if you found value in it, if you'd hit that like and subscribe, I'd appreciate it. And of course, don't forget about hitting that notification bell down there because as you know things in this space can change lightning fast and I'd like to get that information out to you as soon as possible and on top of that I don't want you missing out on any of our regularly released videos. Now if you're one of the thousands of folks who have been watching these videos but you haven't yet subscribed would you do the channel a favor and join this community we'd really love to have you on board. So in the meantime and in between time stay safe be blessed, and I'll catch you in the next one.